All right, it is that time again. It is time for another monthly money roundup. Happy October, happy pumpkin spice latte season, happy flannel season, happy fresh Macintosh apple season, happy all that good stuff. We are gonna be talking about all of my spending for the month of September that just passed. In last month's video, I talked about how August was a very expensive month for me, and that was because I made two very large discretionary purchases. Both of them were planned, both of them were budgeted for. Well, unfortunately, the September that has just passed was yet again another very expensive month for me, and this time it wasn't because of discretionary purchases. It wasn't because I decided to spend money on fun things. It's because a whole bunch of things just happened all at once, and it's all very expensive. And so this was a hefty month for me. We're gonna be talking about all of it. One of the other things we're gonna be talking about is something that I get a lot of comments about, and that is owning a pet on a budget, specifically taking care of a dog while trying to stick to a financially responsible lifestyle and how those two things often clash. And you're gonna see a lot of that in today's video. Just as a reminder for how I'm gonna go through this, there are 10 categories that I like to split my spending up into. I'll put them on the screen for you right here. Look at that, movie magic. And of course, we are gonna start with what is the biggest expense for me, as well as for most other people, and that is housing. Every month in these videos, I give you guys just the total calculation for my housing costs altogether, including all of the associated expenses, which includes my mortgage, property taxes, utilities, insurance, as well as a line of credit that I've taken out to help pay for some of the renovations I had done when I moved in. And that number altogether is basically what I would be paying if I was renting. You guys saw me pay my last installment of property taxes back in like June or July, when I made a video called What I Spend in a Week, and a lot of you were shocked and completely appalled that I paid $1,300 for a one quarterly installment of my property taxes. Many of you said that's more than you pay for an entire year. And I have to say, I guess that's just what things cost around here. Canada in particular, Ontario, has very, very expensive property taxes. I will say that we don't have a homeowners association. Um, I don't have to pay additional for garbage pickup or snow clearing on the roads or anything like that. This is all inclusive but property taxes are expensive, and this month I had to pay my next quarterly installment. So my housing costs were quite a bit more expensive this month than they are on a regular basis, but my total housing cost, I have my computer here, my total housing cost for the month of September was $4,127.29. And yes, that was because it included a big payment of property taxes, which thankfully I won't have to do again for another four months. If you yourself own a home, I'm really curious to know where in the world you live and what your property taxes cost. If that's something you're comfortable sharing, drop me a comment down below and let me know just for comparison's sake. But also let me know if there are additional fees you have to pay for things like an HOA or garbage collection or land lease. I don't know, let me know. Now moving on, we're gonna talk about transportation. As I've mentioned in the past, I thankfully don't have a car payment, but I do have to pay for gas, maintenance and insurance, just like everybody else. My insurance cost is relatively fixed. I pay $139.70 per month for car insurance, which once again, you guys have commented and said that you think that that is outrageous. And I will say that it is very average, very normal for the area that I live in. I think that Canada as a whole, once again, has some of the highest insurance rates probably in the world. My car is 10 years old, it is fully paid off. I have a completely clean driving record and a full license. I've never had as much as a parking ticket, let alone anything else and I'm still paying about $140 a month for insurance. Additionally, I spent $295.91 on gas, which is pretty average for me, of course, depending on how much driving I'm doing in a month, as well as what gas prices are looking like. And then for maintenance, I spent $103.94 on an oil change, which I feel like is pretty expensive. I feel like I got a little bit gouged there. I went to one of those places where you just like drive in and they do the oil change for you on the spot in like 10 minutes because previously when I had my last one done, I went to Costco and it was a nightmare. They basically held me hostage there for two plus hours, which I know an oil change only takes like half an hour. I kind of had a Seinfeld moment. If you guys watch Seinfeld with the whole like reservation, you took the reservation, but you didn't hold the reservation thing. Oh, I'm sorry. We have no midsize available at the moment. I don't understand. I made a reservation. Do you have my reservation? Oh, yes, we do. Unfortunately, we ran out of cars. But the reservation keeps the car here. That's why you have the reservations. I know why we have reservations. I don't think you do. It was a whole thing and I was like, do you not understand appointments? Um, but even at Costco, it cost me about 75 or $80. So this was definitely a little bit more expensive. Was that $20 worth not having to be stranded in Costco for two hours? I tend to think it was because that place, we'll talk more about Costco in a minute, but I do think that was worth it though. It just seems like everything is getting more expensive. In addition to all of that, I also spent $6.70 on public transit. Earlier in the month, I went to downtown Toronto to attend a vegan food fest, and I decided to park my car on a subway station and just take the TTC. Altogether, that brings my transportation costs up to $546.25 for the month, which feels steep, because I feel like that's just what I have to pay just to like be able to 
do my job and buy food and it kind of sucks. It feels like $500 in the fire, to be honest with you, but that's, that's life, I suppose. It does make me very, very, very grateful that I don't have a car payment because I recently heard a statistic that the average car payment in North America is now closer to $850 a month, which sounds not right. Like it sounds so out there, it sounds so high that I'm like, that has to not be right. But when you think about how expensive cars have become and specifically what interest rates are looking like right now, I guess that makes sense. I used to hear like the number 400 or 500 a month being thrown around and now I'm hearing 850. So that sounds atrocious to me. Uh, once again, if you have a car payment, let me know in the comments what it is every month if you're comfortable sharing. I hope it's not 850 bucks a month. Um, but I guess if that is what most people are paying for transportation, then I'm getting off lucky at this point. Groceries. This month, I really went a little bit wild. Uh, I had to stock up basically on a bunch of things that I ran out of that are kind of more expensive, but you only have to buy every so often. Things like certain condiments, some olive oil, that kind of stuff. I also loaded up on a few kind of like freezer ready things for quick lunches on work days. And I spent a total of $199.93, but I actually spent more than that because I was able to redeem $90 worth of credit card points to get free groceries. I use the President's Choice credit card, absolutely not sponsored, but I do use their credit card on a lot of my groceries and I shop at their brand of stores because that's kind of what is around me. So technically speaking, you could say that I spent nearly $300 but out of pocket, it was $199.93, which is actually the most I've spent in quite a while and still really good, all things considered. But of course, that is only talking about food. I don't count in things like toilet paper and paper towel and soap and cleaning products into my grocery budget. That is the next category, which is household and toiletry. So it includes all that good stuff, anything I need for the house or my own personal care. And I spent a total of $168.29. So once again, this was kind of a stock up month for me. It just seems to be one of those months where I ran out of everything all at once. And so one of those things was I did have to go to Costco. I did not spend two hours there, um, but I had to go to Costco and I bought paper towel, Kleenex, toilet paper, kitchen catchers, like those little compostable garbage bags. And again, it stings all at once, but all of those things are several months or more's worth of merchandise, worth of items. I really hate going to Costco. Like their parking lot is a nightmare. I always feel like I'm gonna wind up running somebody over because like people are just running in all directions in front of your car and behind your car. It's like something happens to people when they get into the Costco parking lot where they think that they're just like invincible. And of course, if I see somebody coming, I'm not gonna intentionally run them over, of course. But uh, you think that people would still be a little bit more cautious about their own personal safety and like stop walking behind moving vehicles. But uh, in Costco, it's just, it's something else. Move, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my God, some self-awareness would do us all well. Try to buy enough of that stuff to last me four to six months so I don't have to go back too often and that's why I spent as much as I did. Now let's talk about what is one of the most expensive categories on my list this month. Aside from my housing, actually it is the most expensive category and that is my dog Levi. So as I mentioned, I do get a lot of comments from you guys asking about tips to have a dog and still maintain somewhat of a frugal budget. I also get a lot of comments saying, oh, having a pet isn't frugal, having a pet isn't a minimalist, having a, shut up, I don't care. Here's the thing, everything in life to somebody could be considered a waste of money. That car that you have that you really like, I might think is an utter waste of money. Your kids that you have to raise and like put through college and feed and diaper and all that stuff, I probably think is a waste of money. And likewise, there are probably people out there, I know there are people out there because you tend to be very vocal. There are people out there who think that having a pet is a waste of money. Being alive is a waste of money if you wanna have that logic. You can't keep everything out of your life that makes you happy. And it is up to each individual person to decide what brings them enough joy and happiness in their life that they are happy to invest their money into it. And for me, I have grown up with animals my entire life and it is just kind of my, my sense of normal and what I know. And I know that that comes with certain expenses, but so does everything else in life. And yes, having a dog can be very, very expensive. As most of you guys know by now, my dog Levi is an 11 year old Norfolk Terrier. He has a genetic heart condition called mitral valve disease, which is pretty expensive to maintain. This has been going on now for about two years where he has to have regular testing like echocardiograms and blood pressure checks and chest x-rays. He's also on a couple medications to manage his cardiac issues. He's on both a cardiac pill as well as a blood pressure pill. And because this has been going on for two years now, it's not to say that it's not expensive because it very much is, but I've kind of budgeted for it in a way where I know what all of this stuff costs at this rate and I kind of just plan for it and expect it. 
and it is what it is. So this month he did have to have an echocardiogram and yes, it is pricey. It cost me about $850 to have an echocardiogram done on him. This is something he has done roughly every six months and it allows us to monitor the progression of his heart disease as well as to adjust his medication suitably. And unfortunately this time it did show a mild progression since the last time, so I had to increase his medication a little bit. But as I mentioned last month, he's also been having some GI issues, some tummy troubles. And while I wish I could say that everything has been all resolved now, it's actually gotten significantly worse in the last few weeks and we still don't really know what's causing it or why. And so there's been an additional layer of expense associated with this. But in the past few weeks, I've had to switch him on to a veterinary prescription diet. I've tried him on two different kinds of probiotics. I've had him tested both for parasites and for pathogenic bacteria where everything came back all clear, thankfully. But that still leaves this question mark of why are his poops so bad? Why is he having so many issues? What's going on? Why is he so gassy and gurgly? and why has he been sharding in my house, which is something that he's never done before in his life. And so this month we finally decided to take the step and try him on a round of antibiotics. Actually, as of recording this, we're on day two, three, three of antibiotics. So fingers crossed that this is gonna resolve whatever's going on, that maybe he has a bacterial overgrowth or something. I don't really know. Uh, if this doesn't work, unfortunately, all we can really do is do more invasive testing, which is yet again gonna be more expensive. And, and so the next steps would be, the vet is suggesting either a test for a B12 deficiency um, or an abdominal ultrasound to look for any sort of inflammation or even potentially cancer, which of course I hope is not the situation. But for all of that stuff we've done so far, along with his echocardiogram, and the probiotics and all that stuff. And I also have to buy him some poop bags. Altogether for the month of September, Levi cost me $1,257.69. And no, for anybody who's gonna ask, I do not have pet insurance. And to be honest with you, just like knowing that he's been unwell, that he's got some sort of mystery GI illness going on, it has me very stressed. I don't want him to feel sick. Um, and as much as I don't have endless money to keep burning on inconclusive tests, the truth is I would pay pretty much any amount to be able to help him and make him better. If I knew it was gonna help, I would just do it. So I'm hoping that the antibiotics do the trick, but uh, time will tell, I guess, tune in next month and you will find out if we are in the clear or if there's more stuff to be done. To answer the question that everybody asks about having a pet and whether or not it's possible to have one while maintaining a low income or a tight budget, the answer is, Sort of. I am very hesitant to say that, you know, people on a low income shouldn't have pets. I don't want it to sound like it's some elitist thing that only the rich can have the pleasure of living with animals. I don't think that that's fair. But the fact is that they all have needs. You can make the same argument for kids again, which again, it would be very much socially unacceptable to say that if you can't afford to raise a kid, you shouldn't have them. But from an objective standpoint, you could make the argument, you know, if you don't have the means to provide for somebody beyond yourself, you shouldn't bring somebody else into your life, whether that is a human child or a pet or anything else that is completely dependent on you for care. Um, you know, getting pet insurance can to some degree regulate your expenses, but they still need food. They still need veterinary care. They still need, you know, babysitting when you're away from home. They still need all sorts of things. And so I think that you know, like anything else, if you plan for it and prepare for it, that's okay. But obviously all the preparation in the world can't prevent kind of an emergency from popping up and hopefully you have something in line, something prepared to be able to handle that when it happens. Moving on now to my more fixed expenses of both internet and phone. Uh, these are the same every month for me. My internet is 56.49 per month, which is a pretty good deal, but it's pretty shit service. And my phone is $76.75 a month, which is absolutely bullshit, uh, but here in Canada, we basically have three companies, mostly two, but a smaller third company as well, which control all of the telecommunications in the country and they're terrible. And it's like, they just charge you whatever they wanna charge you because fuck you, who's gonna stop them? I am hoping to be able to get that phone bill down um, by maybe taking advantage of a Black Friday plan uh, in November. So fingers crossed on that one, but together for those two expenses, currently it's costing me $133.24 every month which is what it is. For my business, again, I always pay business insurance every month. That is $62.37. And I did have some extra expenses, just some supplies. When you run a business at some point, everybody needs some supplies that they have to purchase. And I spent $154.69 on that. So my total business expenses for the month were $217.06. For restaurants and entertainment this month, I spent a total of $136.60, which included a few things. Uh, it included the food that I bought when I went to that vegan festival, which actually wasn't much. It was just like a snack, but you know how festival food prices are. Uh, my best friend from out of town actually came in to visit on a whim and we decided to go out to dinner. So I bought dinner there. 
Um, and I also bought a concert ticket. So I do kind of amalgamate the entertainment and the eating out budget together. Cause to me, they're somewhat interchangeable. It's things I do for fun. I bought a concert ticket to go see City in Color, Dallas Green in February. And that cost me $85, but altogether it came up to 136.60. I spent $0 on health this month and my miscellaneous spending outside of those other nine categories came out to $390.99, which again is quite a bit more than I typically spend. Um, but I have been working on getting a little bit of decor going in here. It's about time. I've been here a year and a half now. So I purchased a screen printed poster as well as some frames to start hanging things in the walls. Um, and I also had to buy some aquarium salt and some other small supplies for my saltwater aquarium, which I still have. I've had these two little clownfish now for, well, as long as I've had Levi for like 11 years and uh, they just keep trekking along and I kind of wish I didn't have to take care of them, but I'm gonna continue to, of course, because that's what you do when you bring a creature into your life. You take care of it to the best of your ability for as long as you possibly can. So $390.99, which is definitely more than I typically spend in a miscellaneous category. In fact, I often spend kind of close to nothing in that category, but again, when it rains, it pours everything all at once. That brings my total monthly spending for September up to $7,187.34. Whew, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot. You know, that's pretty much what I spent last month, but I got two large purchases involved in that, which was a Peloton bike that I purchased secondhand, as well as a new couch that I've ordered, which hasn't yet arrived. Uh, actually, it's quite funny. Somebody commented on that video and said, oh, I hope Levi's stomach issues are resolved before your new couch is delivered. And I kind of laughed when I read that because I was like, oh, of course they will be. His issues are pretty moderate at that time. And to be honest with you, how things have progressed over the last little bit, I've got that concern too. I mean, he is my primary concern, but I'm like, oh man, I hope this is fixed before the new couch comes because I do not want ass juice on my brand new couch. But I did pick a couch that has washable covers, so it has that going for it at the very least. But yeah, $7,187.34, which included very little fun. That's a tough pill to swallow. Obviously the two standout expenses there were the fact that I had to pay a large portion of my annual property taxes and the fact that Levi has had all of these medical testing things happening all at once. Hopefully October is gonna be a less expensive month for me. And in fact, I'm gonna try taking a completely different approach to my finances in October. I'm gonna try something that I have never tried before. And you guys will have to tune in next month to see exactly what that is. But I'm gonna be testing out to see how much control we really do have over our spending. And if there is a psychological component there that we can control better than we think we can. So I'm gonna be trying something. I'm gonna be trying an experiment. Tune in next month and you will see what I've done and how it's panned out. Cause at this point, I have no idea. We're gonna give it a go. As always, I'm very curious to know how your living expenses compared to mine based on where you live in the world. So feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know what you pay for things versus what I pay for things. Toronto is obviously a very high cost of living area and I try to make things work on a modest budget as much as I can. I'm always pretty conscientious about how much money I'm spending on the things that I can control, but unfortunately there are some things that are just completely out of my control. And uh, no matter how much I would like to, there's no way that I can pay less for my property taxes or my car insurance or my cell phone currently or anything else that you guys pay a fraction of the price for in the US. Welcome to Canada, eh? If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Thank you guys, by the way, very much for 30,000 subscribers. Like 30,000 seems like a lot to me. I don't know if this is gonna make sense to anybody else, but there are a number of YouTubers that I myself watch and have watched for many years. And for a lot of them, I discovered them when they were around the 30,000 subscriber mark and I watched them grow infinitely since then. And so, to me at least, 30,000 seems quite notable and I'm very much appreciative of all of you guys, so thank you so much. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. If you would like additional content, you can check me out at Patreon. I will put the links to everything in the description box down below. Don't forget to tune in next month so you can see how things progress. I will give you guys an update on Levi and I'll let you know if my financial experiment has actually worked. Take care, have a good one. See you guys next week. Bye.